Confidence is not being conceited, being arrogant, or putting others down to build yourself up. Confidence is having certainty and assurance of something or someone. When we're confident, we have courage and hope. The courage to do things that we need to do, even if it frightens us, and we trust that it will work out in our favor. First and foremost, knowing that you will be okay, no matter what happens to you. Force yourself to envision in your mind, you being okay. Picture yourself smiling and laughing on the other side of whatever you're facing. Your perspective plays a major role in how well you get through difficult situations. The second way, improving your communication to yourself can grow your self-confidence. What do you tell yourself about yourself? Do you say encouraging words to yourself like, I'm okay. Say it out loud, go ahead. I'm okay. I'm good. Nod, point to yourself. Agree with yourself. I'm okay. I can do this. Say it with me. I can do this. I'm learning. I can do this. I'm learning. I'm okay right now. I'm going to be okay tomorrow. I'm necessary on this planet. I have work to do. I'm loved. I'm needed. There is a solution to every problem. A problem is a learning opportunity that has an answer, and I'm going to find it. The third way, hardships. Going through a difficult situation will build your confidence. I have hit rock bottom twice in my life, believe it or not, both two separate and very different situations that both affected my health and my ability to make money. When you are flat on your back and you're looking up, I want you to realize that the only way you can go is up. When you overcome difficulty and hardships, trials and tribulations, your confidence will grow. You can look back and see what you've overcome. This will help you to know and believe that no matter what you go through in life, you will be okay. Preparation will build your self-confidence. The more time I spend preparing for something, the less nervous and doubtful I am. And I'm not talking about over-preparing to the point that you don't take action, but how much time have you utilized to practice? How much time have you utilized to read, to become familiar with something? There is a wealth of knowledge in books. Someone can stuff 50 years, 60 years worth of living, wins and losses, mistakes and lessons learned into a single book. Part of being wise is learning from the experiences of others. Utilize preparation to build your confidence. Number five, developing your work ethic. Keep your word, your promises to yourself. If you tell yourself you're going to read five pages per day, then adjust your schedule to accomplish that. I have an alarm on my phone with the things that I need to do. And if I have to, I'll set it to go off every single day until the task is done. Number six, taking action in the face of fear or anxiety will build your self-confidence. You have to recognize that there is a difference between fear and anxiety. Fear is our emotional response to an imminent threat, which causes us to flee. Anxiety is the worry, the thoughts, the anticipation of a possible future threat or an unfavorable outcome that causes us to avoid something. Usually, most of the things that we face in life don't pose an imminent threat or danger to us. So when we're feeling something, it's usually anxiety. Whatever you're feeling anxiety about hasn't happened yet, and most likely it won't happen. You may not know this about me, but I love to DJ. One of my earliest DJ gigs was at a university. My wife and I pulled into the parking garage to set up and I suddenly began having an upset stomach. I got nauseous and began sweating. All of the knowledge and the skills that I had accumulated up to this point seemed to disappear, and the negative thoughts began to flow. What if I mess up beat matching the songs? What if the mixes don't blend well? What if one of my turntables stops working and I can't fix it? All of that was garbage. I pushed through that anxiety. We got everything set up, and I performed one of the best sets I've ever done. In fact, the person who hired me contacted me again for a gig because I did a great job. That skyrocketed my self-confidence. Now, are you having anxiety over something? Is it something good that you know will benefit you or your family? If the answer is yes, you might want to see it through. Number seven, don't compare yourself to others. You are running your own race. You have a different mission in life than everyone else. You are as unique as your fingerprints, even if two people do the exact same thing, is going to be different and is going to serve a different audience and achieve a different outcome. Don't compare yourself to others. 
Number eight, know how to defend yourself and stand up for yourself and others, not only verbally, but physically. Do you know basic self-defense? Do you know how to fight? There is a difference between fighting and self-defense. Fighting involves exchanging blow for blow with your opponent. Self-defense for the street requires a different mindset. It involves employing situational awareness, armed and unarmed skills, and provides weapons such as ink pens and keys, biting if necessary. In nearly 30 years, I've trained in all sorts of things. Not to seek out conflict, but to avoid it and to get home safely. Knowing self-defense and fighting techniques are both helpful and will definitely build your self-confidence. Number nine, exercising. Particularly strength training and building muscle. Whether it's with weights or with calisthenics, putting some muscle on and getting stronger is going to build your confidence. Number 10, being mindful of your diet. So, I have what's known as a sweet tooth. I always have dessert, and I'm not shy about it. If I know dessert is a possibility for the evening, I'll fast all day until dinner so I can enjoy my dessert without feeling guilty. Now, I'm not saying that's right. If you have thoughts about it, about eating healthy and being fit, tell us down in the comments. Let me know if I'm tripping. Nevertheless, having a balanced diet, drinking lots of water every day, cutting back on the alcohol. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I haven't had a drink in years. But if you do, maybe substitute one of those drinks with a black coffee without the added creamer or sugar. Drink hot teas. Cutting down on excess sugars is going to show in your physique and is going to make you look better in your clothes. Number 11, getting sleep. If you don't get enough quality sleep consistently, you won't have the energy or the mindset to tackle what you'll face from day to day. You'll start making small mistakes, overlooking things, having the short temper. All these things will wreck your confidence. Number 12, getting a mentor. A mentor can give you encouragement and keep you from wasting time and money. A mentor will keep you from making the same mistakes they made. A mentor will be a positive influence on your life, which brings me to my next point. Having positive people in your life. It can be anyone who genuinely cares for you and is not a yes person. Avoid negative people also. Avoid negative people at all costs. Negative people are usually jealous of you and will slowly tear down your self-confidence over time. Number 14, being mindful of your attire. If you put even the smallest amount of effort into your wardrobe and fragrances, you will get immediate feedback from others because it's uncommon. And it's not about being arrogant, it's caring about how you present yourself, whether or not you want to admit it. What others think about you does matter, and it does affect major areas of your life. Making smart style choices will display, non-verbally, that you care about yourself, that you have attention to detail, and that you're bold enough to do what others don't do. This builds your self-confidence. Confidence is what helps me to start this YouTube channel. I'm literally a man in my 40s with a family, a full-time job, friends, a social life, and I used to wonder what will people think of me if I ever put myself out there and started a YouTube channel. And I found out most people don't even know, and the people who do know are extremely supportive. It's literally no big deal. And taking this step to start this channel afforded me with my next step, acknowledging small wins. Small wins, small accomplishments, are like stacking bricks on top of one another. Soon those bricks will turn into a house. Set small wins by setting smaller attainable goals. For example, learning how to fix your toilet, learning to change the battery in your car, writing a basic script, pressing record, and posting it. These are each small wins that'll lead to a larger win. And number 16, consistency. The more you show up, and do the thing, the easier it gets. And pretty soon, you will be the teacher. You know, when I became more confident, my life improved dramatically. I had the courage to face difficulties head on. I had the courage to go after that new job, to start that new business. I had the courage to tell people no. I had the courage to remove people from my life who were a detriment to me. Some people are just bad for you, but they may be good for someone else, and that's fine. Wish them well and keep it moving knowing that you will be okay. If this information is helpful to you, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment below on what stood out to you. And if you know anyone who could benefit from this video, 
go ahead and share it. Until next time, take care.